What's up, family? How you doing? How are you? Good, bro. Looking good. Oh, What's up, Nada? How you doing, bro? See you. So you already know what I'm doing, huh? Yeah. A poor man's undefeated for. <laughs> We're running the company car today. Okay. They're nice. It's two colorways. Yeah, yeah. Yo, how much is the license plate plaque uh, thing? I'll grab one of those, too. I'm just supposed to buy shoes. Hi, right, bro. Right, man. Good to see, see you, man. man. If you need them, let me know. Of course, bro. Thank you. Have a good one, man. What's up, YouTube? Today, we're going to be customizing these crafts into some poor man undefeated fours. The real undefeated fours came out in 2005, and to date, it's considered one of the sickest and rarest collaborations. They only made about 72 pairs for the 2005 release, and those go for $20,000, $25,000, or even $30,000. They also re-released them in 2018. That release goes for thousands of dollars as well. If you guys are new to the channel, back in 2016, my very first ever restoration video on this channel was the undefeated four. If you guys want to watch one of my cringiest videos, check this one out. This is the closest shoe that Jordan Brand has given us to the undefeated four, so we have a lot to work with. We just gotta give it that undefeated pop. Let's get started. Before we take out the laces and insoles and get started with this project, let's talk about these craft fours. Overall, it's a beautiful, good quality shoe. I love the suede, I love the colors, but the one thing that's missing is that the shoe has no netting on the side panels or the tongue. It's an embossed suede. It's cool looking, but not exactly what I'm going for. So in this video, I am going to be replacing it with some netting. First, let's take out the laces and insoles so we can fully take out the tongue. In order to add netting to the tongue, we have to completely remove it. A lot of this custom is going to be focused on the tongue. We got to add netting, replace the tongue tag, replace the liner on the back, replace this back piece as well. There's a lot of work to it. And it all starts by removing it off the shoe first. So we're gonna be using an X-Acto knife and a seam ripper. Tongues are completely off the shoes. Now let's deconstruct them. The only thing we're gonna keep is the green suede. We don't need the liner or the tongue tags. Tongues are deconstructed, now we need some netting. I had to go into the bone yard and find some parts. Luckily for me, I got a good friend like Clipping Kicks. Anytime he has some old parts that he doesn't need, he sends them over. In this case, he took off the mentals for a personal project and he sent over the uppers. These are perfect for this project. We'll take off the netting, then dye it. What's cool about these two is we got some tongue tags for some future projects. As I was in the bone yard looking, I found these authentic orange Jordan insoles from some 2006 all the fives, same era as the 2005 undefeated fours. These go perfect for this project. And I found these authentic orange laces that match these insoles nicely. Let's take off the netting. White netting is all cut up, ready to be dyed. Right now we got some hot water cooking. We're gonna put everything inside this tray. We're gonna be using some red dye to try our best to get it as close as possible to this tone. We got some green, brown, and black. We'll mix it all up together. Hopefully we get the color we want. Parts are fully dyed, however, during the process, there was a change of plans. After I added the green and the brown, I ended up getting a weird purple mix. I can't explain it, but I didn't want to waste these parts, so I ended up adding a bunch of graphite black dye from RIT to overpower that purple mix. Let it sit in there for another 15 to 20 minutes, and we got some great results. Fully black, nice and solid, it's fully wearable. Originally, I was going for an olive tone. That's okay, we're not going for an original undefeated four, we're going for a poor man's undefeated four. Also, there are several versions of the undefeated. There's sample versions that also have a gray netting, so this is close enough. Netting is good to go, the red dye did its job. We got them solid black, it's gonna contrast nicely off the olive. I got them fully rinsed out, they're ready to be installed, so we're back onto the shoes. The netting is gonna go on both sides of these panels, but first, using a seam ripper and an X-Acto knife, we gotta cut open the stitching. We're back to the red dye. I went to the fabric store looking for some orange fabric material for the liners. I couldn't find the exact tone that I wanted. It was either too dark or too light. So I ended up finding some all white polyester material. This is nice and comfortable. We're gonna dye it the exact tone I wanted. All we're gonna use is some red dye orange. Hopefully we don't mess up this color. While we're at it, we're also gonna throw in these tongue tags that are yellow. We're trying to turn them orange.
fabric is still dying in the orange dye, we're gonna let it sit for several hours to absorb as much of that dye as possible. While we wait, we're gonna start putting these tongues back together. This is the big staple point when it comes to the undefeated fours. Under the Jumpman tag, it says Jordan Rare Air. I pull these from an old pair of Tour fours. They're literally perfect. Now we're gonna sew it on with the post bed. To attach the netting is gonna be really easy. We're not gonna be using any glue. We're simply gonna be using these small little clamps. We'll attach it on each side and then hit it with the post bed. Netting is sewn onto the tongues. It looks great. Let's do the same thing for the shoes. We got our black netting. We gotta slide it inside. We already opened it up. Once we slide it in, this is exactly what it's gonna look like. But first, let's adjust the size using some scissors so we can cut some of the edges. So I just laid down some glue on the inside to keep the netting in place. Now with the patcher, we're gonna go back and fill in all the stitches that are removed to lock in the netting. Good to go with the netting on the sides. We're done with the patcher for now. We got the netting locked in. Let's get back onto the tongues. Originally, I was dyeing some white fabric with some orange red dye. After a few hours, I realized I was not getting the color I wanted. I let it sit for a couple days longer and the color was even worse. So I went on Amazon and bought some orange fabric. This is the exact color that I needed, nice and vibrant. However, the fabric's a little bit too thin. I can still make it work. Ideally for this process, you wanna use some headliner fabric. That's what the original material is. It's a lot thicker and more comfier, but it just wasn't gonna come in in time. So I settled for this, it's good enough. Off camera, I reconstructed one of the tongues, added a new orange liner, as well as added the tongue tag and some interior foam. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in just a bit. One thing I've always noticed about Jordan 4 tongues, the Air Jordan logo is always flipped upside down. I'm not exactly sure why they did it that way, but just because I'm doing this process, I went ahead and flipped it and added the Air Jordan this way. Got the Air Jordan tongue tag off the old liner. Now we're gonna put it on the new orange liner. We're gonna cut out a piece of the orange liner then with some double-sided tape, we'll stick the Air Jordan tongue tag onto it, and then with the post bed, we'll sew it in place. Before we use the post bed, one of the questions that I recently got on YouTube from Long8888, what threads do you use on the uppers? For the patcher and the post bed, I use the same exact thread, number 69, and it's polyester. Let's sew these up. These two pieces are good to go. Now we're gonna attach it onto this part. It's actually pretty easy to do. First, we're gonna lay this part down flat. Then we're gonna place a tongue over it and cut all the excess material that we don't need around it. Now for this part, we could go about it two different ways. If I wanted the Air Jordan text to be upside down, all I have to do is flip it. But in this case, I want it to read normally. Now I wanna make sure this tag is lined up properly in this area and symmetrical to the opposite tongue. So to do so, we're gonna line up the top of this tongue tag to the top of the Air Jordan patch, just like this. Once it's lined up perfectly, we're gonna grab some clamps, clamp the top, clamp the bottom and the side. Those clamps are gonna stay in place while we use the post bed to ensure that this material doesn't move around. So far, so good. Right now, it looks a little bit weird, but it's coming together. With some scissors, we're gonna chop off the excess material on the top area only. We're not gonna worry about the bottom just yet. After that, we're gonna spray some glue on the original interior foam, just on the back side only, and then we're gonna stick it on the tongue.
Interior foam is in place, new liner sewn in. Now to bring it all together, we're gonna flip it inside out. Rollover looks great. Same thing with the patch on the back. It lined up properly. Now to lock everything in place, there's a couple things we gotta do still. We gotta spray some more spray glue on the inside top piece. Once you spray some in this area, we'll make sure it's nice and flat. Spray some more on this area, same exact thing. And then we'll go to the post bed and lay down some stitching all around this bottom piece to fully lock it in. Tongues are fully reconstructed. We got netting, brand new tongue tags, and a new liner. These look great. Now we still have to attach them onto the shoes. First, we're gonna be laying down some glue on the bottom edge of the tongues and on the inside of the shoes. After that, we'll let it cure for about 10 or 15 minutes. We'll stick it together. Then we'll go back to the patcher one more time to redo the stitching on the bottom to fully lock it in, and that'll complete the sewing process. These are definitely looking like some undefeated fours. Tongue is attached, let's get on to the paint job. First, with some 800 grit sandpaper, we're gonna go over the entire midsole to get it ready for some paint. Really what we wanna do is remove all the factory finish so the new paint can adhere properly onto the midsole. After that, we'll take care of some taping. Yo Vic, we got a question. JM8601. When you're doing paint jobs, you sand it down first before using acetone or vice versa. Also, does every paint job require sanding? It's a great question, Ace. So when it comes to newer midsoles, specifically like this one, I always sand first to remove any imperfections from the factory. Once those imperfections are off, I go back with some acetone, give it a quick wipe down to remove the factory finish. During the paint job, if I'm airbrushing, after a few coats, I go back with some 1500 grit sandpaper, 1200 grit or 1000, remove any imperfections to get it as smooth as possible. That way at the end, it looks good and it feels good. Prep is complete. Now let's tape up everything but the midsoles to do the paint job. All taped up with a whole different shirt. Let's lay down some paint. For this midsole, we're gonna be laying down two different tones, black and cream. We went ahead and mixed up the color using white and a little bit of brown to create the perfect cream tone. We'll lay it down with the airbrush. Cream paint is laid down, let's cover it up so we can lay down the black paint. Midsole repaint is complete. I wanna give it the factory finish that the original Undefeated Force have. So for the cream, we're gonna be adding a glossy finish, and for the black, we're gonna be adding a semi-glossy finish. So I'm gonna give the entire midsole a glossy finish first, and then for the black, I'm gonna go back with a little bit of matte to create that semi-gloss finish. Midsole is almost complete. We still have to go in and take care of the details. With some Angelus leather dye, specifically orange, and a small detail brush, we're gonna give this air unit a nice tint. We just gotta be very precise and careful and not get any of the dye on the white midsole. Air units are complete. The final detail we gotta take care of before we lace up the shoe is the Jumpman tags. Originally, I put these inside orange red dye. However, the red dye did minimal. It's still pretty yellow. So for the Jumpman, we're gonna be using some Andalus orange paint with a small detail brush to cover it up. And for the flight, we'll be using some black paint. Tongue tags are complete. That was the final detail. Now it's on to lacing it up. We got the original olive laces and some orange laces. Personally, I'm a bigger fan of the olive laces, but I think the orange laces will give it a better pop. Let's lace them up. 
All right, guys, that's gonna bring us to an end on these poor man undefeated fours. When I first saw images of the Kraft fours, I knew it was gonna be the perfect base shoe to pay homage to the original undefeated four. Undefeated is one of my favorite brands. I wear it all the time, and they created one of the best collaborations ever, the undefeated Jordan 4. So making this custom was a no brainer. But it did take a lot of work to get it to this point. We had to do some deconstruction. We added some netting on the side panels. The hardest part about this project was the tongues. We took it apart completely added the netting, added a brand new orange liner. The coolest thing about this project and a state point is the Velcro Jordan Rare Air Tongue Tag that we replicated nicely like the original Undefeated 4s. Other than that, we added some authentic orange laces and some orange insoles from that exact same era as the original 05 Undefeated 4s. We repainted the midsoles to make it look like the originals, added cream on the back, tinted the air units orange, and added this black piece over here. Overall, it's not the exact same looking shoe as the original. We have different materials to work with, slightly different colors in some areas, but that's okay. This is just a custom. By the way, you guys, I'm looking for more shoes to do restoration videos on. If you guys have anything cool or rare or something that I've never worked on before, send us some pictures and a description to the email down below. At the end of the day, there are different versions of the Undefeated 4s. There's like four or five other sample versions, some with black netting, some with the black lip underneath. They're all different, so we'll consider this the Vic Almighty Sample Undefeated 4. When it came to this project, there was a lot of different things that I've never done before, so in this video, I hope you guys learned something new. Also, leave a comment down below on what you guys want to see next. This is Vic Almighty. I'll catch you guys next Monday. See you guys.